and welcome to tonight's episode of PZP, the Pagan Center Podcast. I'm Dave. I'm Amber. I'm Scurve. Also joining us tonight is... I'm Amanda. All right. So tonight we're going to talk about excessive legislation and marginalization uh, after these messages. listening to the Pagan Center Podcast, bringing unique and intelligent perspective to the masses using contemporary technology, allowing for free discussion of one's personal beliefs and enlightenment of those not familiar with a particular religion. We bring to the forefront many issues that are ignored or shunned upon by mainstream religion. We discuss topics on a religious and non-religious level as they relate to our panel representing varied belief systems. Our brute honesty and candid opinion has made us one of the longest-running and most popular pagan podcasts. Feel welcome to call in live or submit listener feedback via our website, pagancenteredpodcast.com. And we're back. What a forward from Scurvy. I have a voice. Where is it? Behind the sofa? <clears throat> Usually the last place you look. <laughs> the ability to have one's voice heard is what makes them a person in the eyes of the public. Time and again in history, whenever a people has lost its ability to have the voice heard in a medium that can project empathy and passion to the people at large, they have lost the right to be considered a person by the lawmakers. Though we may cast many an ill glance at the film industry in the past decades, it has provided that valuable service. Alrighty. Now my moral obligation is complete. I gotta put some epic music over that. So, so you got here is the first point here that a basic tenant of, in life is. Um, have the solution you intend to use to be able to fix the problem, or you are a hypocrite if it only advances your goals. Yeah. What, what does that even mean? I, it's it's a little bit conspiracy based, but quite often it's just my observation. People sort of use uh, we'll say tragedies to advance their own agenda. And we'll leave it at that because I value my uh, position. Yeah. I gotta start leaving more detailed show notes. <coughs> Hypocrisy in business and politics. How about let's start with what motivated this? Alrighty. <clears throat> what initially motivated this was the uh, a letter I got from uh, my union. They wanted anybody with immediate contact. By the way, my union who sent me this letter, but and provided zero other help. But oh, we're not going there. <clears throat> After the whole uh, what was that Minnesota union busting deal? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not going to say that unions are all good. Okay. My opinion is, and I, I say this as someone who currently pays union dues, is unions have gotten a little carcinogenic compared compared to what they were originally intended to be. Anybody arguing with me on that? I, as a person who is not a member of a union, do not disagree. Okay. So that being said, I have to look at this from the other point of view. <clears throat> With that whole drama that was going on going on over there, they were basically what was that? Declaring a state of emergency, amongst other things. Uh, I think that was. I think you talk about Wisconsin, and uh, basically yeah. they just shut down the government. Mm-hmm. And that's. Words. I should have them. You had some moral issues? Yeah. What were those moral issues? Honestly, 
I'd rather keep spirituality where spirituality belongs. I'd rather keep my day job where my day job belongs. I really like to. really wish I could leave it up there, but let's not go there. Uh, and quite frankly, I like this podcast, and I don't want to abuse it. This is where I expected laughter. Ha, 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 Sarcasm. Ha, ha, ha. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but all that being said, <clears throat> I thought about it, and I'm honestly looking, this motivated me to uh, start looking at newspaper articles with a bit of a different perspective, just to go over a couple of my favorite recent highlights. Let me go bring that up. Ah. God damn it. Somebody help me out. I'm dying here. I have no idea what you're trying to write here, so I'm kind of lost. Um. This worked out pretty good the other day when I was ranting it. Why can't I find it now? So are you generally talking about people being, like, discriminated against based on other things? Or people getting things that they really shouldn't, or... Well, here's one. I, th I think government, and now I, I say this as somebody who... Our government... Well, half the room's Canadian, but... Government is there for the people. Okay? And people are there for the government. It's it's a two way street, okay. Kind of like the whole circle of life deal that uh, Disney movies like to make famous. But keep going on that. Like this uh, one AO Hell News article: Cabbage Gate Man fined five k for a home garden. Okay, honestly, who cares? Why should the government care that the guy is selling veggies out of his freaking garden? Okay. Well, let's look over here at this whole Bank of America it's being sued for attempting to seize, seize homes and all that. Okay. Foreclosures on zero debt forging documents. At least according to these... Uh, Articles I've been reading. Where the hell's the give a damn? Ah, damn it, I suck right now. Dave, start ranting about your start ranting about those articles you post on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you told me to be an asshole tonight, and, uh, you, you, yeah. Um, so, Skurv had me, uh, put together some examples of, uh, excessive power in the legislative, uh, law making branch here in the United States. And, you know, he, he took notice to, uh, quite a few things I post to my personal Facebook here. And one of the, one of the first things I immediately thought of was a uh, a news reporter speaks at a uh, local municipal council and is arrested. Um, something about some kind of rule of formality, and they were even trying to say that um, make her make a choice between speaking at the meeting or videotaping the meeting. You know, as a member of the press, they wouldn't let her do both. And so videos get circulated about her getting arrested <laughs> at municipal council. So then the council freaks out and declares an emergency because the video was, quote-unquote, inciting riots. Now, keep in mind, this is a town that's, uh... Yeah, a lot of people like to say it's a town with three stop signs and maybe a gas station. I mean, it's a little bigger than that from people who have actually been there, but, uh... You know, people just don't like getting caught doing stupid shit that everybody knows they shouldn't be doing. 
And, uh, you know, one thing people are very slowly learning in our country is that mom mentality gets shit done. You know, you, somebody can have all the power in the world. They can have a badge. They can have a gun. But if they're outnumbered 10 to 1, they really don't have all that much power. You know, you're starting to see that with the mob robberies, you know, where you get about 20, 30 people together to rob a store. You're starting to see that, you know, with uh, just everything. And people are beginning to realize mob mentality works. And people are taking a stand against their government and other things that perhaps they shouldn't be taking a stand against, but they're doing it. Um, well, let's be real, okay? Now, right, wrong, or indifferent, our government is basically what wraps us in this country. Okay, that's our infrastructure. If people want to make a change in the government using mob mentality, <coughs> march on Washington. Mm -hmm. Don't be doing stupid things fucking shit costing people's lives. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you know, uh, you know, one thing that, that you learn, you know, my family has been fed for, you know, we have a lot of feds in the family, and one of the things that's very interesting about those oaths that they make you take is um, to, up, to basically uphold and defend uh, the constitutional form of the United States government. <coughs> and when they ask you if you ever overthrow the government, it's always... Have you attempted to overthrow the constitutional form of the U.S. government? It's as if they really don't care if, if you want to overthrow the government. They kind of understand the framers almost expected Americans to overthrow their government periodically, and that's okay as long as you respect the Constitution. And that's why that question is phrased that way. <clears throat> Let's be real, okay? Every time you vote, you're overthrowing the government. Well, you'd be surprised how many positions there are that are not directly elected. I mean, people like to point back to the way things originally were in the U.S. government, where you couldn't even, you, we weren't even electing our vice presidents or our senators. But if you really stop and think about it, there's a lot of people in a lot of positions of power that are not elected by the people. So that is fundamentally not really changed. I mean, yeah, the, the actual people you're you're um, you're electing has changed, but. Uh, you know, other than that, it, it's it's pretty much the the same. You know, check and balance of some things you vote for and some things you don't. See what gets me with this is people are. I'm not gonna say losing the ability to speak. I think they're just not caring enough to speak anymore. Well, it's the old uh, circus and uh, uh, what is that? You know, keep everybody fat and hungry and entertained. And what do you know? <laughs> Everybody's fat, hungry, and entertained, and uh, so nobody gives a fuck. Now, the only thing that gets the government a little bit worried is unemployment, because when people don't have money, they're not being entertained. They're cutting back on their entertainment costs. And, uh, yeah, you get enough people that are unemployed, that becomes a critical mass, and they can start doing crap. And here's just my thoughts, okay? And every, it's gotten to be a bit of an adage to whole talk about big money in the government. My view on this is it's another branch of the government. Well, business is manipulative over the government. They tell us who to vote for. Okay. God, this episode's painful as hell. I hate politics. I really hate it with a passion. But right now it's... I'm seeing too many articles of banks doing this and big money doing that, of government does this, I was even shafted that way a while ago. Well, let's not go there. And, yeah, they run an article on MSN or AOL or two-minute segment on the news that I don't watch, and nobody does anything. Well, one thing I've learned from hanging around with a lot of uh, affluent people is 
their mentality when it comes to getting caught doing something is how much you have to pay to make this go away. And what do you know? It works. Whether it's lawyering up with the right lawyers that you know cost a lot or whatever, you, you throw enough money in a situation, you can make it go away. Then we wonder why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, and it seems like the rich really don't suffer any consequences for their actions is because they don't. Cities making it illegal to grow your own food. Lovely. Yeah, and I, I, that caught my eye because usually it's an HOA, and HOAs usually have strict rules of what to grow, not grow, or you need permits to plant something. Just because you know they realize people are stupid and they'll go ahead and plant mint or something some heavily invasive species that they think is food and yeah, it takes over the neighborhood and everybody's bitching about it. <clears throat> but, you know, for a city to do this, that's a whole different ball of wax. There was a guy in the museum, I think it was last year, and uh, his his study was in, was it ethnobotany or, or, I forget what it is, but it really doesn't matter, but he had voiced back then that it was a major concern that they were trying to push through in a lot of local governments that you were not allowed to have a garden. Mm -hmm. You were not allowed to grow your own food and everything had to be bought through your state government and they had to know how many plants you were making, what you were doing with it, were you giving it, you know, what were you doing with each one that with it blossomed and he was really serious about it. And at the time, a lot of people were like, yeah, 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 whatever. No, they can't do that. Well... Yeah, it's yeah, kind of crazy. Kinda crazy. Um, um, if you, you are into conspiracy, conspiracy theories and that kind of thing, um, listen to Stuff They Don't Want You To Know, the episode on the, the, the Monsanto conspiracy. That will get you thinking. Uh, the Monsanto conspiracy is essentially that uh, the company... Uh, Monsanto is um, they, they specialize in genetic engineering, and they are the ones who basically sell all the seed to all the farmers in the world. And you cannot, um, you know, you cannot harvest offspring of the seed because then you'd be violating copyright law. So you have to constantly buy seed from Monsanto, and you know, it, eventually the, the conspiracy theory goes that there will be so much Monsanto seeds in the world that. People just won't have seeds for regular stuff anymore, and those seeds will just stop existing. And thus, Monsanto, a single company, will control the entire world's food supply. Then conspiracy theories get crazy from there. But essentially, you wind up with one company controlling the world's food supply. Let's and talk about conspiracy theories for a second. I know people like to dismiss them, but are they dismissing them because it's crazy? Are they dismissing them because they don't want to think about that? Well, usually it's easy to dismiss because there's lots of um, <coughs> easily discredited statements or there's no proof for it. But when you start getting a lot of circumstantial evidence, like, really, really, what does a government give two fucks about what you're growing on your land? That's really, I mean, is that weakening the defense of our country somehow? I mean, really. Um... But, you know, if government's bought out by big corporations like Monsanto, well, then government has a reason, you know. Not so much that government is this, you know, faceless, soulless entity. They're just paying off all the politicians to, to make sure that their best interests are sought out for. And just on a vague sense of academic uh, integrity on that statement, I uh, would like to point out the tobacco industries. Mm-hmm. How much fun was that saying that uh, cigarettes cause cancer? Or is that like libel or something if I say that? I don't know. It's no, on the pack. For a while, the, the, the tobacco companies trying to say it was libel, then a certain Congress uh, critter, I don't remember if it was a senator or a congressman, but uh, he got kicked out, and all of a sudden, all this anti smoking legislation got passed. All of a sudden, when, when this one politician was no longer in office, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Conspiracy theory. God, I hate politics. But it's not just politics, too. I mean, let's not forget that that all the branches of our government are pretty much fucked up. Um, There's a certain beauty to... I mean, yeah, our system's not perfect, 
And honestly, I hope it never is. Okay, the moment we think our system is perfect is the moment it... We become too complacent with it. And it, yeah, it might have been perfect 10 years ago. And might, that might be a great 10 years, year number 11. It's not that decade ago, and it just don't work anymore. Yeah, but let's not forget that, you know, okay, legislative, you know, basically influences executive, and executive appoints judges. So you got your Barack Obama here. And he's appointing people that used to work for the RAAA to be judges in positions where they can defend copyright. So basically the RAAA is now overseeing cases about the RAAA. How do you think those things are going to go? Or you get politicians that appoint judges just on politics of, oh, okay, well, you're a good Christian, I'm a good Christian, let's make sure those pagans don't get rights, and they wind up appointed to the Ninth Circuit Court. Which then result in rulings like we just seen on the, you know, where pagans can now be legally discriminated against in the U.S. Yep. Isn't that sort of, uh, the, what was that, Jefferson, I believe, said that if uh, my neighbor, whether my nation worships no gods or ten gods, it neither breaks my leg nor picks my pocket. Something like that. Something like that, yeah. A little hazy on the quote. It's it's been a while. I, I love it. I love the quote. I just keep forgetting the details. So isn't that sort of making a law that how was that worded in the Constitution again? I think this is actually Googleable. Let's Google, let's, let's, let's Google the U.S. Constitution real quick. Well, I mean, civil rights is not part of the Constitution. It's not part of a constitutional amendment. I mean, constitutionally speaking, women still have no rights. Technically speaking, there's a lot of people that don't have rights, constitutionally speaking. I mean, they fixed the whole slavery bit, but that, for some reason, even in the late 20th century, the Women's Rights Amendment still gets knocked down. Well, honestly, it's just my opinion that there's not much difference between slavery and minimum wage. It's just how you pick them. Slavery and minimum wages, I mean, you don't forget to instill greed. you got to instill that sense of greed, which makes people constantly buy stupid crap and invest their money in completely bad ways. You know, instead of taking their money and saving up on the side so they can buy something, no, they're gonna, we're going to suck in the money out of them and make them pay the lot. You know, That's what I like that. about a lot of pagan crowds, so they don't entirely fall for that, which is why you can't really make money off the pagans. I mean, they're, they're cheapskates. <laughs> I love you guys for it, but I mean, it's... <laughs> I mean, when you, the, the, the power that a company has over you, even as an individual. I mean, we're not talking about the abstract of making laws or making rulings on, on courts now. You know, Chase just had someone arrested for attempting to cash a cashier's check that they issued. <laughs> Lovely. God. You know, any off chances we get we get uh, raped from this episode, we can call up Circle Sanctuary. <laughs> I'm sure it'll send lots of positive energy our way. <laughs> Circle's a little busy with that whole fight for overturning that stupid ruling by the Ninth Circuit. You know, all too often we're getting our pennies in a bunch of stupid crap in the pagan community, and that is something worth getting your pennies in a bunch about. Yeah. Well, I think in general, as far as people going off the deep end, I think 
and we've touched on it a couple times, that tends to be the what happens um, in general with big things is that you have little things that are distractions. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at it, dealing with the government, that is a big idea for a lot of people. It's a very intimidating idea for a lot of people. Um, they have this bigger than bigger than anything. It's I couldn't touch it if I tried. They just see it as one big, you know, uniform entity, and it's not. I mean, you got to break it down to its component parts. I mean, there you have senators and congressmen that represent you for a reason. It's this way, you have that personal interaction with someone that is moderately local. But it is much easier to blow up at something that you feel that you can control. Yeah, good point. Hey, I got an idea. Let's, let's play a game. Okay. Like I like chess. words. Su- I was thinking word substitution. Good, not thermonuclear war. That game is always... that. I always lose that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's look at this. It's not legal to discriminate discriminate against pagans when hired just be sure to list must not be pagan in job description okay yep that's the only the only thing you gotta just list it in the so, job description does that mean if I want to discriminate against catholics I just have to list must not be catholic correct yes that is now legally permitted through catholic excellent okay. so hmm does that extend to race too? No, only religion. Okay. The ruling was not that broad. So does that mean someone might not be put in a situation where they have to prove they're not pagan? Theoretically. Theoretically. How the hell do you do that? I mean, where in history has there ever been a circumstance where you had to prove you were not a religion for your own benefit? Okay. The Inquisition. When people came to America. <laughs> okay. Wow. I mean, that's Convert just like... Or die. I'm sorry. You remember that? <laughs> this is like, that's like a Godwin from hell. Japan. Can't forget about that. There we go. What about the Holocaust? Thanks, chat room. <laughs> Well, I think that's the biggest one, right? Yeah, there's one, too. Well, let's not forget what we converted all the Native Americans to Christianity. Yep. Still doing it, too. Hell, we even convinced the Native Americans to do it, too. Yeah! Gosh. This episode is honestly making me physically ill. <laughs> America. Am I the only one? We destroy cultures better than any other country. <laughs> <laughs> Great. At least Hitler put the Jews on trains. We make them walk a thousand miles. <laughs> but I think you kind of bring up an interesting point here of, of taking... I'm going to modify a lot of what you just said here and, and just say... A mortgage is basically like being on a feudal state. And to be blunt, how is it much different? Other than maybe after 30 years, if you live that long, it's yours. And you just, and you get the, the wonderful opportunity to rent the land from your government. Because you got to pay tax on it. Every single year. Here's a topic that came up a while ago as well. This is on, uh, in, well, basically health insurance. I work with someone who's reached a uh, maximum that his health insurance is willing to pay for his well-being. That's Interesting. The same. There should be no limits on stuff like that. Well, I can see it from both points of view. I mean, totally factoring out the value of human life for a moment at a certain point, you have to say, I can 
spend a million dollars to prolong your life for 10 years, or I could spend that million dollars to prolong 10 people's lives for 20 years. I mean, there, 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 there it does come to be that point there, but... Or you can just tackle it like they keep talking about in politics. Well, why don't we just make it not cost a million dollars? Dave, heresy! Well, <laughs> How dare you frankly, use logic like that? Quite frankly, how do I say this? We should all be getting our medication from Canada and saving a shit ton of money in the process. I've also heard horror stories about some place, about uh, Canadian and I believe English uh, health care as well. It's like, yeah, yes, yeah, you gotta get this taken care of right away. Well, but you, you never hear about like Japan or Sweden or France and how awesome they're all doing. And you know what? You never, they never really focus on the good and the bad compared to what we have. I mean, we have the same damn problems, if not worse. I mean, of, of all the socialized medicine in the world, the British system is probably the worst of socialized medicine. And they still do all right, all comparatively. Yeah, yeah you, you spraying a, a toenail and you, they'll take you in. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, if you need surgery, you'll be waiting a month or two, but that's different. Yeah, but look at over here. I mean, if you're looking for a transplant, it may not even be a month or two that you're waiting. Or, or more than likely, the person doesn't have insurance, so they choose not to get the transplant that they need. Right. So... We keep forgetting about that, like, one-third to half the country that doesn't have enough health insurance to cover stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but let's be real. We just spent half an hour... Less than enthused about our uh, some of the policies of our government. Are we really sure we want to go down the alternative? <laughs> Maybe not with the current people. I mean, let's be real. I mean, we, are, we have a government that uh, just said it's okay. Just must list. <clears throat> just be sure to list. Must not be pagan in job description. I mean, that's. But I think some of it is, a lot of this is the marginalization that's happening for people is people are just letting it happen. Yeah. As certain, I mean, which, which I, yeah. I admit that news is overloaded, okay? There is so much shh going on in the news that it, it's almost impossible to keep track of. Well, I mean, news make, makes its, its business from perpetuating crap that we should have gotten over with months ago. I mean, like, all this news coverage of Casey Anthony trial. I'm like, what? That shit's still going on? God damn it. You're wasting hours of news coverage on this shit? We're well, you heard about five countries right now. How about some news on that? Well, well, well you heard about they're trying to make a new law, to, um, the, the Casey law. So they're going to change that if it involves a child, it's now a federal offense to not report the missing, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. There was something about double jeopardy thrown in there. Well, over here, what, what the, the, um, one of our search and rescue uh, organizations went out there to search for somebody who apparently was never missing. And now that that's been on the record in the courts, you know, sworn to and everything, they're suing the shit out of them. It's like, really, you, you, we could have used these resources in our own state, but we were nice enough to come to you to have, because we thought your kid was missing and you were just fucking with us. Just a clarification, you're talking about the balloon boy? No, some kid that, that the mother killed the kid or something like that. I don't remember the story. I really just don't give two shits. <laughs> but it's not Balloon Boy. I don't know. Uh, being down here on the island, we don't have the cable because we just choose not to. So we don't really keep up on a lot of local news. 
and we get a lot of our information through the people that come through. And there is a huge difference in what people are worried about here as compared to talking to somebody from back home in Pennsylvania. Talking to somebody in back home in Pennsylvania, it really seems like they're frothing at the mouth at nothing. And they're worried about this over here because, I don't know, they're wearing purple and how dare they wear purple. Whereas down here, if it, if it affects your quality of life, they are concerned about it. Mm-hmm. If it affects the, the, the way that the court cases are going to be handled, they care about it. Unless it's something major, nobody cares. So there is, there's not a lot of discussion about the, the Casey girl trial because, well, it's not here. So they're probably not having up to the second coverage of the Goblin Group on Facebook. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Island, men- Island mentality, as far as that goes, is like, are they screwing with me? And then screw it. Are they really dangerous? And then screw it. So. Yeah, and I got a chunk of news earlier that blew my mind, but let's not go there. <laughs> well, yeah, I, d- I did some uh, reading a while ago, and this was. Can't remember where I read it, thank God, but uh, probably should do more in line citation, but. Well, well, okay. We'll start with we'll start with the more annoying things. Okay, now, as a federal employee, I was told that I'm not getting a raise for a couple of years. Which, well, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, it's annoying, but I'm not really gonna bitch. Okay. Raises are for when we have money. Need might be going up, but the money's just not available. So hey, all good. Why are our elected officials not taking pay cuts either? And giving out, like, bonuses to their staff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, lead by, lead by example, please. What, what you was know? that, a $100,000 bonus someone just got at the White House? But, you know, we don't have money to give you guys, you know, a 10 cent of my hour pay raise. I'll be honest with you, okay? Yeah, okay. I know there's a lot of jokes about federal work. Let's not entirely go there. And if I was told today that solving the budget problem would involve a 50% pay cut, yeah, I'd bitch and moan. I'd be sending out resumes, but I could live with it. Trust me, if I was after the money, I would not be working where I'm at. But that being said, when you're looking at the people who are lawmakers, I, I honestly, I'd rather be led by example. It's getting to the point in our culture where the laws, instead of a republic like uh, Franklin was talking about, you have a republic if you can keep it. After he signed that, it's getting to the point where it's not laws to help the people live. It's not the republic to stop the uh, two wolves and the lamb from deciding what to have for dinner tonight. It's getting over to the point of, well, we got these laws and we're just going to rape you with them. Shouldn't we have leaders that we actually want to follow, too? We shouldn't be sitting there so upset at how utterly bad their leadership skills are. Well, Well, here's my thing. There was recently a theory that I've come across where the theory is, is that once you have more than 30 million people under a government, 
the government can no longer be a functioning democracy or a republic. Things just become too big, too unwieldy, and too uncontrollable. And lead, that's not even to get into the lack of local representation. I mean, the nice thing about, ha like, like Texas is starting to get there, but we're at, like, I don't know, 25, 28 million. I forget what our population is here down here. But you still feel very empowered. You know, we don't like the TSA, so we pass a bill that says the TSA shouldn't be groping people. Now, granted, it's been watered down, but we still pass the damn law. Yeah, we get shit done. We talk to our representatives. We write letters. We talk to our senators. And, and stuff gets done down here. And that's nice because, you know, we're yes, we are growing rapidly, you know, because all the Americans are moving here. But we're still able to have that nice little cozy-sized government where we can do the shit that we want to do and get it done, get it done fast, and get it done right. Whereas, you know... You look at the United States and you look at what's happened to the United States between, like, say, 1960s and today. I mean, let's stop and think about it. We built the entire fucking interstate highway system. You know, however many tens of thousands of miles of highway, we built that in, like, 10, 20 years. Now, we can't, if we were to do that today, we'd be so stuck in government red tape and environmental protection crap, we'd never get it done. I mean, there comes a point where the government's caring about too much crap to get stuff done. You know, yes, we're still awesome at blowing crap up, and then, okay, as much as we want to make fun of that, that's still one of the, you know, primal functions of a government is to defend its people. But, you know, it's a, lot, a lot of people have varying uh, opinions about how far government should be going as far as protecting the welfare of its people, and that's where we get different political viewpoints from. You know, some people... Would prefer a very minimalist stance where the government really doesn't give two shits if you're growing a garden in the back of your yard. Well, let's look at it from another standpoint. For every piece of armor you put on, you're going to have to sacrifice some mobility. Where's your happy medium? From another standpoint now, I'm thinking about this, okay? I'm trying to figure out how the government dictating what you can and cannot grow in your government in your garden is a positive action. Some would argue, especially in an HOA, that it helps it maintain the value of homes. As bullshit as that is. How does it yeah. maintain the value of your homes? I, I, I don't see how that makes sense. Because the HOA telling you everything maintains the value of your home. Except the thing is, most people don't know HOAs long enough to see an HOA go defunct or see many HOAs go defunct. HOAs tend to go defunct about 40 to 50 years into their inception. And ultimately, the HOA falls apart and the whole community becomes worthless anyway. So this whole protecting the value of your home is complete crap. It's kind of the idea that you obviously can't take care of things enough, so we're going to put enough regulations to take care of it, to make you take care of it for you. It's kind of like your mother constantly telling you to clean your room to her standards. Same idea, just on a bigger scale. Doesn't work when you're a kid very well. No, one person in the chat room is saying maybe the USA should split up, and that's kind of... The idea that's being proposed by some of the, I guess, I wouldn't call them fringe anymore, but they're definitely outliers in the political environment. Um, the ones that are very much for states' rights. Um, not so much the secession, it's just the, the, the very strong uh, states' rights proponents. You know, the whole thing is that the federal government shouldn't be doing much of anything, and it, everything should be going through your state government. Anything that really touches you should be your state government. And the federal government should be doing basically more of the primary functions of any government, which is protect its people, maintain a defensive force, you know, just the very basic things a federal government needs to do. Well, here's something else, though, and I hate I understand, well, and considering I was just in door, well, I had to use, try not to incriminate myself here, but, uh, yeah, not too late now, but. Looking back at it, let's look at some of the things the government has done for us. OSHA. Occupational safety, uh, West H Health. Health organization. Okay. These laws, basically is what they are, these standards, they save lives. 
Okay. And just a heads up for OSHA standards. Do you know what wrote those standards? Darn what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those are written in blood. They get them from statistics. How do you generate statistics? Well, if your statistics are on accidents, people have accidents. Okay, and quite frankly, people are pretty damn fragile. And or stupid. And I well, worked we got... in a, a lot of restaurants where we had to deal with the the OSHA, and everybody would, oh, OSHA, they're so unreasonable, and nobody understands. Really? <laughs> when you would go through their checklist, it wasn't that unreasonable. I mean, yeah, it was a little bit strict. And it can be a little bit of a pain when you're trying to do things as quick as possible, but it wasn't out there regulations that were ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. that's where some people say you need the federal system because the states just suck at some things, and you need the federal government to come in with its power to override the states. Okay, 40-hour uh, work week, Labor Day. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else has our government done? Busting up monopolies? I'm on both sides of the street on that one. Although, I don't seem to be doing that recently. Uh, no, no. The, the government is very pro-business at the moment. Yeah. And I'm not just talking Texas government, which has been notorious for such things, but the U.S. government, like the Supreme Court is... You could pretty much predict a ruling. Whichever one is more pro-business, that's the ruling they're going with. And to backtrack, just have a second, we just had a comment in the chat room where they said that they've read about and seen businesses that cut corners with safety and quality and such, so they can really see how OSHA can be very, very helpful. Oh, trust me. There's some supervisors that don't want you to do some craptastic, stupid stuff. It's like, well, it's your job to get this done, and this is what we're giving you to get it done. And you need to do this much a day, otherwise you will be fired. And, well, let's be real. Who Brandon here deals with that all the time. Who here can afford to lose the ability to feed yourself, especially in this economy, to fight a battle of principle? Okay. Who here can't really afford that? Me. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of us can. I mean, uh, that's... Exactly. So, looking back at it, I honestly think people need to start speaking again. I honestly think, as up as this sounds, I honestly think we need to develop a new medium, a new form to speak. No. I mean, yeah, this is the age of communication. Yeah, yeah, you find a web thing, form for is, everything. The thing that, that, that has been proven to work in the last 10 years is because everybody's moved over to phones and email. Nobody fucking pays attention to phones and email anymore. But if you write a good old-fashioned letter and you send it through snail mail, you'll be surprised how much attention it gets. Yep. Because people don't mail shit anymore. So when the congressman... Or a senator gets the piece of mail, their 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 staff is material. like, "What the hell is this?" And it actually gets read. It's material. It still exists when they throw it in a garbage can. Whereas email, I mean, let's let's be blunt. There's all these forms on the internet where it says, "Click here to send an email." What do you mm -hmm. think is going to happen? The senator is going to get three thousand fucking emails and ignore them all. Yep. I'm sure I mean, they, they make it so easy to flood. I mean, if we just look at Facebook, just looking at Facebook, how many of us have seen somebody you know has cancer? If, you know, click and share this, it's everywhere. If it is that easy to post a message, to send a message to the congressperson, they are getting the same thing 
by so many people. There's people making alternative screen names, alternative addresses. I mean, to send let's, this let's, multiple let's, times. Let's, let's just look at another way to send a message, okay? Let's look at what's worked in the past. What's worked in the past? People said, well, we're going to gather 10,000 strong and we're going to march. That sends a message. Letters, they send a message. But people don't do that anymore. Well, the problem is it takes work. And you don't have well, anonymity when you put your return address on an envelope. Well, I don't entirely think it's that. I think some of it is it's our culture is getting to the point where we just can't afford to do it. I mean, no, I think we're just too damn lazy. Well, it's a mix too. of laziness, and there is a there is a mix of fear in there. I was going to say the same thing. Everyone is so damn scared that if they're the only one, something's going to happen to them. You know. That's why we almost need the mom mentality to get things done. Or at least how like, people feel about it. Like with Brandon's situation, it's a, yes, it's only one company, but they mistreat a lot of people. If they would get together and contact somebody higher and say, this is what's going on, and they would have tons of people getting together... But no, they they don't want to do it because they don't want to risk their jobs. And but they don't see that if they would band together, things would happen. And until that happens, the company has perfect deniability. Nobody ever filed a report. Yep. I haven't seen reports disappear before. Yeah, but usually when people don't submit them in the first place, it's a lot easier to make them disappear. The way I mean, I- we've seen in the Patrick Ray Column case how easy reports disappear. So... <laughs> The way I see it is uh, when it's just one person that has a problem, or it's lots of one people that don't see other people having the same problem, they are afraid to to uh, address that problem. When there's a lot of people who are banned together to to work on a problem, the mob mentality comes in, and mob mentality is great, but it makes people stupid. Okay. Just does. Okay, let's look at another way to speak, okay? I mean, and I just realized this. I have done almost no research on on this, well, for what I'm about to say, but I've read in the past of people speaking to Congress. What's that take? An airplane ticket and an invitation. That's it. How do you get an invitation? Talk to a Congress critter. Get invited. I've heard a story. It's not from here in the States or here in Canada. But apparently this one guy who wanted to speak to the Queen, like the current Queen that we have, Elizabeth, someone wanted to speak to her, obviously was having a couple issues. So what happens is the Queen comes into her bedroom, and who's sitting on her bed? But this random guy somehow got through all security and all that stuff. Now, kudos to her, because what did she do? Aside from probably hitting the silent alarm, she actually listened to the guy and actually tried to, like, s- to see what she could do and actually gave him the benefit of talking to him. That is completely unheard of with anybody else that you've ever heard that you could talk to. I mean,. Don't get me wrong, about a year ago, I got stuck with the whole, uh, I found out that, how do I say this? Yes. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart. <laughs> 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 but, you know, it's getting to the point, especially uh, where I work, where you don't even have to do anything wrong. You just have to have people that sort of said you did something wrong. I mean, yes, the stories might not mesh up and all that. It's still enough to cause a lot of drama. It's still enough to send a message. And that's part of what I think people are afraid of as well. I mean, let's be real. If it really came down to it, Who here is 
maybe just a little bit of afraid of being reported to the FBI or whatever for something you maybe even didn't even do and going through two years of hell trying to f- prove it. Like, uh, holy crap, what would happen if uh, someone was accused of being pagan that was just recently hired except they didn't disclose it? might have to prove you weren't pagan to keep your job. Have fun with that. How can you prove you're not pagan? Well, well, proof's a funny that... thing. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of like proof's a popularity contest. That's what last year taught me. It's not about logic. It's not about a lot of things. It's a popularity contest with all the burden that's in that. Because just like the rules of the internet, I mean, that, that applies to bureaucracy as well. So I'm not entirely sure where 34 would go, but hey, let's leave that one alone. Get the feeling that's more Clinton topic anyway. Uh, chat room says rule 34 would be Anthony Weiner. <laughs> But to prove, but to prove you're not something, you have to have a definition of that thing. Well, definitions are subjective. Now, how many times has this podcast? Oh God, tried please don't make us define this again. <laughs> I'm not making you. I'm pointing out that we've <laughs> tried to define it so many times and have never succeeded properly to to define it perfectly. And I think we've just succeeded in getting Barrett to speak. <laughs> okay. Don't tune it out and listener. make him nervous. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, on some definitions of, of pagan, you can put in Christians into that definition. So, yep. you're lost. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Honestly, I mean, wow. I just think that's the last thing people should be worrying about right now. You know, we have such a horrible, horrible, horrible um, unemployment rate right now, Canada and the states. Like, that should be the last thing that the government should be allowing. It's like, look... No, if these people can do the jobs, who gives a shit what their religion is? You know? Since when does it matter? Here's my viewpoint on it. Religion shouldn't really play anything when it comes to the job, okay? No, it shouldn't. I'm I'm very pro-secular when it comes to the workplace. Well, there you go. And I'm a cashier. If, if someone can do the cashier job, who cares if they're Christian, pagan, Mormon, whatever? The only job it should matter in is if it's in a church or something similar. That's Actually, I know atheists that work in churches. Well, see, that's where I can, I can you know. kind of see a borderline with what they're talking about with the court case. Is that you know, to to deliver communion, you're supposed to be ordained by the Catholic Church. You're not supposed to be. So, eh, if I was there and, you know, some Catholic was trying to talk to me about religion and he had this attitude, or even if he was very nice, even noticing that he would, even say, knowing that he would be Catholic would be like, eh, I don't think you can really understand me. So in the situation, I can kind of see where it is functional. Everywhere else is going to be the problem. Well, let's look at it from another point of view, okay? If it's a religious organization... Quite frankly, why are they paying their people to do religious things? I mean, at at a certain... I understand that, yes, people... Yeah, culture and all that, but... 
at a certain point, I mean, I have to ask if it's a job where people are being paid and they're being hired, like job interview hired. You know, it's just my thought that if it's you're doing something for your church, you're doing something for your spirituality, you should be picked out by your spirituality, not by a freaking help ad. It shouldn't be filled like a job. It should be filled like a spiritual position. Just my thoughts there. But then how are these people going to survive? Because the church, usually, like with, with most denominations, the church will actually pay you to go in. If you are ordained, the church gives you an allotment, or I'm, I'm not sure how all parishes work out, but you get paid for being a pastor, you get paid for being a priest, they give you a house, or they give you help with the house. You get a lot of benefits, so I wouldn't worry too much. On the pagan end of it, it's different. But that's yeah, kind that's... of like, you know, we should be getting together as a community to pay these people and help them survive, but we're not in a state to be able to do that. Well, you don't really get money out of pagans. No, you really don't. Well, you do. Yeah, I mean, look at what a... we did with the... With the Doctors Without Borders, with Peter. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. So, it's either Peter Diving gets everyone together, or we sell glitter graphics, and that's how you get the <laughs> <laughs> Thank that's you, safe. Dave, for just uh, giving me an, a pro-suicide argument. <laughs> <laughs> doctors Without Glitter Graphics! Oh my god! <laughs> Sounds like doctors I want to talk to. I go into a doctor's office and there's a big glitter gl graphic on the wall and I'm walking out. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Here's what I got from this. I think people need to start focusing on positive action. I mean, yeah, spend some time, study the problem, but when it comes to government, your options are speak or bitch. Well, how about this? How about you take the, the amount of time you're going to spend bitching at someone out on the internet and spend half of that time typing up a letter, printing it out, slapping a stamp on it, and mailing it? Dave, you're asking people to think. We know how that usually goes. I know. This whole, like, refocusing so that you use less energy to get more shit done, I know that blows everyone's mind apart. And no, no, no. Here's what we're going to Dave, Dave, I got an idea. Okay, now I was just saying about leading by example. Oh, God. With that bad news that I was just given. Yes. Let's, once a week, we're going to write a letter. We're going to scan it and post it to Facebook just to show that we did. And we're going to mail it. Okay, I'm not scanning to anything. Every one of our fans and send them, <laughs> tell them we need more hate mail. God damn you all! <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's, that's... And we do it to one listener every week for the rest of our eternity. <laughs> no, let's spend some time. We bring up a lot, find a lot of messed up articles. Let's spend some time, find an article, and write a letter to a congressman or a judge or whatever that's involved. Probably just congressmen. I don't think he. I don't know if that works well with judges. No, not so much with judges, but you know, Congress critters. It's, it's a, you usually they feel responsible to the people, especially during election years. Yeah, and let's attempt to lead by example. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? I waste ten dollars in stamps. Man, what the hell can I bitch to Ron Paul about? He's my Congress critter. 14 district represent. <laughs> I think our lady is both Purdue. Because, I mean, right now, I've, I've, I've just been bitching, and I'm going to have to rise to my own standard. All right, that's... I've just said a more. We might get some Congress critters on the show, and then then two people might listen to us. I mean, I just set a moral standard, and I'm I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to abide by it. God, we're ta we're not only talking about logic, we're talking about personal accountability. What is the world coming to? 
You know, now that I have something like a motive to bitch about stuff, I don't know what to bitch about. See, what I can see is a big uh, difference between American politics and Canadian politics is Canada, Canadian politics generally deals in needs. Uh, American politics generally deals in morals. I like that. Well, morals are subjective, so that becomes an issue. Which is why all the politics are an issue. <laughs> I'm glad you you guys came to that conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to seem like an asshole, but I pointed it out. <laughs> Oh, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I, I equate politicians with prostitution in the same boat. But let's not go there. I had a, a woman... Actually, come to think about it, I think I have more respect for... Actually, I've, I've known a couple prostitutes. <laughs> I've, I've got respect <laughs> for them. I spoke I take so that back. I, I spoke yeah, unfairly to the prostitutes. Let him ever talk, goddammit! <laughs> <laughs> I talked to a woman that was, I think she was secretary to one of the, was it a mayor or a congressman or, you know, and I asked, you know, what do you do as a, as a secretary? That seems pretty hectic. And she just rolled her eyes and goes, oh, you have no idea. Most of my job consists of keeping them out of jail because most of them are dumb. <laughs> and she went in and she was just so annoyed. She's like, they don't understand that you cannot fire somebody because you didn't realize that he was black. Yes, that is against the law. No, they will take your grant money. Yes, yes, they can take it. Yes, you can get charged with negligence for doing that. She's like, this is stuff that most, the average person of high school graduation will know. Most of these people, they don't. I think that is a little bit of an issue. <laughs> if the secretaries have to keep the Congress people in line because they really don't know the law, this is an issue. Who the hell's really running the country then? The secretary. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> One of the quietest, most completely l overlooked groups of people, the secretaries. Holy crap. Oh, you never overlooked the secretaries. And the chairman of the Federal Reserve. <laughs> That's being sarcastic with the overlooking. I don't know. There's a lot of politicians doing a lot of really stupid crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is. Guy sending his penis out over Twitter and then claiming it was hacked and then being totally like a douchebag to all the media for like... How come? God damn it, I told you I was hacked. Yeah, but there's no proof of that. <laughs> I love how he kept saying saying stuff like, it might be a picture of my penis. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> how many pictures of your junk are up there? So... If it might be a picture of his penis going off what Barrett said, then that means there are pictures of his penis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't take freaking pictures of your penis. Imagine Especially don't post them to Twitter. The only thing this tells me is I'm going to have to use small words when I write letters. <laughs> True. Yeah. Unless the secretary's reading it. <laughs> Scurve, I think your level of writing is on their level of reading, so... You'll be good. <laughs> oh, that was horrible. Dave's just trying to motivate me to drive to Texas. Yep. That's all. Yep. <laughs> Our entire state's a disaster area. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you. Dun dun dun. I tell you what, if you, if you can find some sort of uh, relief work for me to do that, do down there. I can get an excused absence. <laughs> <laughs> I hear there's some fires that need fighting. <laughs> I, I Maybe you them. can douse them with people. <laughs> <laughs> people have water in them. 
<laughs> exactly! Go, Dave! Go! <laughs> 70 to 80%. <laughs> I have to say this. Never again the burning <laughs> The ultimate irony for a wicked. Do you sacri- do you burn alive to, to save nature? Or do you just not care about nature and not get burned? <laughs> and in every, as in every typical Wiccan predicament, everybody's ignoring the fire hose that's five feet away. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> this is why I frown upon organized religion. <laughs> so that's why you participated in unorganized religion. Congratulations. <laughs> this part When's the start? Part I don't it- know. <laughs> This podcast is anything. It is unorganized religion. <laughs> well, there, there's a certain degree. I think we hit the threshold in chaos where it starts to become organized again sometimes. Not compared to the first episodes. Trust me, I've listened to them. <laughs> We've come a long way from the snake attacking the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> but I almost... I almost miss the uh, between the different parts that you would have all the actual uh, little voice things into it or whatever, like the ego stroking one. That was hilarious. I wish I hadn't got rid of that one. The little uh, intros. Oh, uh, oh, the the segment intros. Yeah, that was what it is. <laughs> those Mario are having an orgasm. <laughs> Whammy Pot was always my favorite. Oh god, that was so wrong. Look, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Plane Crash. What a Muslim extremist pissed off at this week. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that was PCP. I think that was in for like four or five seasons. <laughs> then Muslim extremists just stopped getting pissed off at shit, so we didn't have a segment anymore. <laughs> They might have just stopped getting pissed off to get rid of that segment. <laughs> but it's a fascinating intro. <laughs> hey, Siri. Hmm. I think I'm going to handwrite this letter. I'm going to actually spend the time to make sure they're neat. You do have good handwriting. When I choose to. Better than my chicken scratch. I don't know, because I'm going to start this up and see where it goes. What's to happen? What's the worst that could happen? Somebody might listen to me? We might get an hour of audio out of this entire recording. <laughs> That's the worst that could happen. <laughs> Man, seriously, I think people actually need to get involved with the government again. I mean, we got, what, four branches now? <laughs> I'll be sure to write my local Bank of America to solicit that they uh, warrant for they, they they lobby for better environmental protections. <laughs> Actually, that's not entirely a bad idea. <laughs> Go down to lobbyists. Okay, who's got the most fucking money? Awesome. Exxon, I want you to fight for paying and rights. <laughs> <laughs> Got enough hippies working there. You know it too. Do it. <laughs> well, okay. Actually that that's might actually be a bit more viable than what I think, at least for what the fuck value. <laughs> what, you want me to write Exxon for, for, to have them lobby for environmental protection? Because I don't think that's going to go very far. <laughs> well, I mean, let's be real. I mean, it, it might. I think it has about the same odds as writing a letter to the government. 
Yeah, but I think Congress critters might pretend to give a shit. He's still got law value. <laughs> I'd probably just sort of print that one out and sign it, though. You gotta be very careful there. They'll eventually twist your words into making you terrorists. Huh. Actually, my place of employment tried that with me last year. What? That'll make it even easier for them. You know I'm right. Yeah. Oh, you kidding? I, I showed up and all that stuff to work one day. They, they, they're ready for business. Dude, you know it's a serious pat down when they grow up your wee wee twice. The double group. Yeah, sooner or later that's going to become an Olympic sport. Just take it as a compliment. It means you're so big down there that they think it's a weapon. <laughs> By the way, Lady Scurvy is single and looking. <laughs> <laughs> would totally strangle me right now if he was in the same state. <laughs> in fact, I think he just left and hopped in his car to drive down here to do that. Well, maybe in another hour. <laughs> Texas is probably about, what, a 30-hour drive? Uh, it's, it's actually a 25-hour drive from where you are. Mm-hmm. That'd be that'd too be much a of a disadvantage. I mean, I'd, I'd be get echo. Echo. Hello. That'd be a too much of a disadvantage. It'd be like twenty. It'd be like thirty hour drive down. Twenty five hours. So it'd be like thirty hour drive for me down. Then I get down there. And I'd be too freaking tired to kick your ass. <laughs> That's why you get a hotel room. <laughs> yeah, but then you're leaving evidence. See, Texas is like the Russia of heat. Except that Mexico keeps invading us. <laughs> nice. Yeah, they decided, the Mexican army decided to come across the border a couple of days ago. We were not too fond of that. We sent them back to their side of the border. How'd that go? Well, not, nobody got shot. Well, that's Do you know why they did it? I didn't hear anything about the, this. The official story is that the Mexicans had the wrong directions and for some reason didn't think that when they were going through a U.S. border crossing that maybe they made a wrong turn. Personally, I think Texas would be the last state I'd try to uh, conquer. Yeah, Mexico has this long-standing thing for centuries that they really just like invading Texas. There's nothing here for them. It's just more of Mexico. (laughs) I I just don't understand it. It's like a tradition for these people. Like, even in the areas where Texas has stuff, they have a lot of people with a lot of guns. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd start with, like, Maine, or, I don't know. One of those well, Texas. border states, like California, where you can't even have a gun. Well, you can, or I forget what the gun laws are in California. Or some, some, Only California. if you're a senator? It's probably something retarded. But yeah, yeah, that, that actually is right, uh... Uh, I think it was the state senators in California that were looking for an exemption from their own gun laws. Yeah, I was just reading that on Park. Well, that's yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah, so I'm betting I'm probably not going to enjoy my time in California. I hate I hate places that are not Texas, like the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Kind of like Texas, I can dig it. Probably explain why you're pissy in Pennsylvania. (laughs) 
It's it, it, it's that stupid, mindless drone of following the rules, even if they completely contradict common sense. You know, the Texas mentality is, what is the goal? Okay, we will achieve that goal. Whereas, as like, I don't know, let me, let me pick on Massachusetts because I love picking on that state. The Massachusetts mentality is, okay, that might be your goal, but let's stay at the manual here and, and follow the procedure letter by letter. Even if it makes no goddamn sense. And it's two in the morning and nobody else cares. Oh, well. To mention, don't, we have like you know the army training facility here in Texas. Really? Do you really, really want to invade the state that has like fifty thousand armed soldiers? <laughs> yes. Hmm. Sure, it's a training camp. They could use some training. Yeah, they could use some target practice. Get out the field artillery. I'm sure they need some, some, some live action, you know, experience as well. See a tank go down I-35. <laughs> Honestly, Mexico is very, very lucky. It doesn't have a lot of oil that Americans don't have access to. Oh, actually, Mexico is fucking loaded with oil. Yeah, that's why we almost went to war with them. Uh, we, if we did, World War One didn't happen, we were going to go to war with them again. What happened is, uh, in the early 19-teens, um, there was a lot of American oil companies in Mexico. And Mexico one day decided, hey, you know what would be cool? If we had all, had all that money. So they decided to just randomly nationalize all the oil wells. American oil companies were pissed. American oil companies were petitioning Congress. You need to go to war with those assholes. We almost did. But then we got distracted by World War One. And if it was today, you would have gone to war. Yep. Let's see. We're blowing up uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, Libya, Yemen. Um, really? You're in Yemen? I didn't even know that. Yeah, we're in Yemen. Jeez, oh, I'm missing someone. What's that one in Northern Africa with Gaddafi? Oh. I try to not pay attention to that stuff. <laughs> so let me correct this. I try to you not comment see? on that stuff. Oh, yeah, ever. And, and Somalia. We're blowing something up in Somalia again. Lovely. But, you know, our country's about to go bankrupt. But that's okay. We can still blow shit up. Apparently there is a, a small panic starting that if things get bad enough that the government will stop paying everything that is federally funded. Except, of course, the Congress people. Yeah, isn't that fun? So, like, police officers, firemen, ambulance, medical, everything will just stop. I was like, oh, well, that would make life interesting. Parks department won't get paid. And you know what that means? Kill the plovers! Kill the plovers! <laughs> you know what? I wasn't even thinking about that, Dave. Thank you for making my night a little bit brighter. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> I vote we never do an episode on politics again. We suck at this politics thing. Just have Kara here. She get us hate mail. Was that the idea behind this episode? You wanted hate mail? No. Well, honestly, here's my thought. I don't know if Bear just commented on it, but I care more about the ethics behind it. There's ethics in politics? Ideally. <laughs> okay. I can I can accept that answer. Yeah, the people in the chat room are responding to what we're talking about. 
Wow. <laughs> Have you been paying attention through the episode? Because Pretty they've been much, responding no. to what Pretty we've much, been saying. I try not to, episode. actually. I really try not to, actually. Ah. What? I, I, I'm walking in at the wrong point on this conversation where someone's admitting to having done something. No, I try. I try not to pay attention to their chat room. Should we call this train wreck over? Yeah. <laughs> Although I'm serious, I, I will. Now someone's gonna have to help me find the issues, but I will write. Well, I'll be sure to post at least one FARC article on my Facebook profile every week to piss you off. Alrighty. We could start with monkeys owning copyrights. Okay. What? <laughs> what? Okay. What? Okay, actually, this is an interesting conversation that happened on Slashdot today. Because what happened is a monkey took some pictures in some, I don't know, some Asian country. I wasn't paying too much attention, but then the, the person that owned the camera posted the photographs online, and now they're suing somebody else for using those photographs on a site as part of news articles to show the monkeys taking pictures. But the thing is, who owns the copyright? Uh, the person that owns the camera is claiming copyright, but actually, when you work through the discussion under U.S. copyright law, um, animals cannot own copyright, and secondarily... Uh, if an animal does something and you want to cr claim copyright on it, you must prove that there is some human creative act involved with the creation of that copyrighted work, and which they cannot prove. Inspiration to make a camera accessible to the monkey to see what happened for laws? Uh, I think it was an accident, but the person that's uh, claiming copyright and in the U.S. that doesn't fly. I now want a copy of these uncopyrightable pictures. Uh, it's a, I got a link to it on my my, my Facebook. I mean, wow! I actually I, I approve. Go monkey. <laughs> God, I wonder what's going to happen if we ever meet intelligent life on another world. Why, why would intelligent life want to talk to this race? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Why the hell would they want to talk to us? I mean, have you seen people like that go to Like, you really just going to need to stop one day, go to Walmart, and just watch the people at Walmart and observe that... Actually, I do that for entertainment. It is, and then you become really depressed. It's like, wow, this is really the height of these people's intelligence. I have genome in common with these people. Dave, I go through that every day. <laughs> Why do you oh. think I, I, I have a, a small group of people I put up with? I'm like, how are these people somehow having enough intelligence to figure out how to have sex and reproduce? Oh, no, no, that comes naturally. Yeah, that's the animalistic brain taking over. You have to wonder how they get up and, and shower properly. Without electrocuting themselves, that's what you have to wonder. Especially when they can't even put on their clothes right half the time. See, what yeah. gets me, though, is, and help me understand this, okay? I'll meet a girl. We'll go out a little bit. Then she decides she's going to go out with her ex-boyfriend with the addictions that beats her up. That can't spend money on food, but has a real nice car, which obviously the car is awesome. I'd rather get food though, just between you and me. Let's not go there. And yet, I'm looking at this as like, okay, here, getting basic needs, respect. Okay, what is it? You just want some pain? We can get an S and M. It's all good. Because women view things differently than men do. That's almost an argument to go gay. Not really, because men are just as bad. 
And I've heard the same thing from women, too. Yeah. Each each sex has its ups and downs. <laughs> now check <took> Bow Wow. <laughs> yes! We need another option. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We've already worked on that. But I mean, a lot of people, especially when it comes to women, they have this crazy mentality of you have to do, you have to be with somebody that is considered good to have on your arm. It doesn't matter what you have to suffer through. But as long as that person, somebody else, is desiring him, then it is good to have around. If your friends go, eh, why are you with him? Eventually you'll go, oh, I don't know why I'm with him either. Unless you have a mind of your own and some balls. Which most women don't want to have in the right situation, somehow. So even though he may be abusive, she gains status. Mm-hmm. Hey, I never said it made sense. Why do you think I don't get along with most chicks? Okay, so it's going back a few years. I'm just going to reapply this to an earlier discussion. Since I'm not mentioning any names, we're going to leave it at that. A woman would rather be ass-raped by her boyfriend to the point where she needs surgery. Because she gets social validation. Um, it depends on how big the give and take is, but possibly. Now I understand what my lesbian boss meant when she said women were fucking nuts. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'd almost, I'd almost want to reapply that to the earlier poli earlier politics discussion, as pitiful as that was. But thinking about it, it does put an interesting contrast on things, doesn't it? Mm, it's it's more just the difference between the way the woman's mind works, the average woman's mind works, and the way the average men's mind work. That's all. Women are geared more towards. Um, being approved breeding stock. Yeah. Even if it's not a conscious thing in their mind. I'll be sure to bring that up at the next nightclub I go to. Are you approved breeding stock? <laughs> <laughs> Heuristics get reused and all that, and women still are about half the population. And for that heuristic for women to have that also means men have complementary heuristics, which are getting reused and recycled, so. Mm -hmm. And yay for gay men, because they don't compete with me. at a nightclub with a measuring tape. <laughs> you sorry, sorry, you're not you're not approved breeding stock. I'm looking I'm looking for good breeding stock. <laughs> I mean if you if you think about it in the terms of fashion, that's why women can have the most ridiculous fashion. And they all think it's the coolest thing ever because a lot of them are going, Oh my god, I have to be like that girl that everybody likes. And they do <laughs> they wear these stupid, ugly boots. With you hear that sound? 
What? That's me intentionally trying to give myself enough brain damage to forget this evening. <laughs> <laughs> what? We're talking about approved breeding stock. Yeah. They're like cows. They don't have to be smart. They just have to have nice meat. And big udders. <laughs> Gotta make sure that once you breed, that they can survive. <sighs> oh man, I am so never getting laid by anyone listening. No. <laughs> no. I just waited for you to come back and say, okay, so I was an asshole. And I went to the bar, and I pulled out my measuring tape just to get I, I got back from the hospital yesterday. Actually, Dave, with your luck, you'd pull out the measuring tape, and ten guys would whip out their wee-wees. <laughs> yeah, that would be my luck. You are in Texas, after all. <laughs> Get that printed on a T-shirt. Looking for approved breeding stock. <laughs> oh man! You hate yourself that much? Oh no, no! I just like having fun. I like <laughs> I like messing with people. <laughs> oh, never! Well, the shock factor is actually probably worth it. <laughs> Okay, do we want to wrap this up now? Oh, I think I think we're already wrapped up and gone and, okay. and left that yeah. by the side of the road somewhere. And, and we're not going back. It's in a bag. We'll pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So are we doing final thoughts then? Or? You yeah, can do a final, final thought if you want. We'll splice it in. Let me put something. Let me put something that'll show up in audacity. That was Alrighty. awesome. Thank you. That was wow. cool. Belgic bow wow. <laughs> my <laughs> final thought <laughs> has nothing to do with tonight's episode, and that's Belgic bow wow. Moving along. People will always be greedy. People don't give a shit about people. That'd be an awesome just, name for a charity. People who give a shit about other people. I'm for it. Um, Go, Dave, start it up. GSP. I just raised a minimum standard of what I gotta do in life. Yay, mate. But just think, you won't be like angry on Facebook, whining to a bunch of people who can't do anything about it. Well, it could be like the news bomb Peter di- Peter gave me earlier. <laughs> uh-huh. Which I still call BS on that. Well, you should come to PCon and find out for yourself. <clears throat> when is that, anyway? Well, February. Is it all booked up yet? Uh... Yeah, the hotel is booked solid. I have to find an additional hotel to bulk up. My final thought really has absolutely nothing to do with the politics, but read A Billion Wicked Thoughts. It is an amazing book on research done on human sexuality and the way the brain works. It made me happy. Yay. Yeah, Amber's happy the world is safe. <laughs> hey, Barrett. Love you, Amber. <laughs> Love you, too. Barrett, question yeah. for you. I'm putting together a podcast series, and I'm pretty much just going to cost people into participating. Now, after studying other podcasts and repost producing them, I discovered... That to make them awesome, you needed to pare it down to like 5 to 15 minutes, really. Okay? Okay. So I'm wanting to put together a pod, a series 
a podcast on basic stuff like Wicca, also true, and all that fun stuff that are just like little 5, 10, maybe 15 minute segments. That's it. Okay. Are you asking me to be on it? Yeah, I want you to put together Ossature stuff. In five minutes. Well, just like five minute segments, you know? <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't doing know. all the post production. I'll do the post production. The post production is not what I'd be worried about. That, that's. Five minutes, tell me about your religion is kind of a big, uh, big thing. <laughs> well, well, this way. It's, it's a way to selectively rant. I don't think he's going to make it through all the sagas and the edits in five minutes. Oh, no, no, no. I might not even say the word edits in five minutes. I've, I've barely, barely read all the sagas and edits. <laughs> That's a, that's a lot. Air had to stay up one night because they were doing sleep testing or something like that, and it took him the entire night just to start explaining to me the basics of it. Now that's that's not him. That's not him. That's just how hard the uh, stuff is to deal with. Yeah, it's like trying to ex- untangle the whole mess of Wicca versus witchcraft. I heard Raymond Buckland explain it today in an hour. And I came to the realization that he could not have explained it in any less time than one hour. It is that fucking confusing. I can understand that, but I'm just looking really basic, small bits at a time. Because it's like, you know how you, how we came up earlier? That there's a series like 30,000 or people, then the government starts going shit, or 30 million people, 30, the government yeah. starts... Yeah? Okay, it's like at that ten minute mark in one oh one podcasts on Wicca or whatever, they just start falling apart. So I was thinking, it's like you know ideal ten minute marker, even if it's you It'll take 50 episodes to do... Okay, it's, I don't care. One little micro topic at a time. Yeah, I mean, Ravencast did a 20-minute episode on weird. I mean, you just gotta have a focus on one topic. And for intro to religion stuff, it's just the basic who, what, when, why, where, how kind of question. Pretty much. I just want to get something... Oh, it so doesn't you're saying kill me. Ozzy is nothing like voodoo. Okay. <laughs> Basically, I want to reinvent basic military manuals for maintenance for religion. It's just real basic, real basic. This is what the outsider needs to know. That'd be extremely beneficial. I've been looking for something like that myself. Me too. All right, well, let's do it. I can help you with some of the writing of the script work if you want. I... I don't know about script. I was... Much as I hate to throw the workload on someone else, I just... Uh, If you're going to do 15 minutes or 5 minutes, you're going to need some kind of script work. Or at least an outline. Yeah. Yeah, maybe not script word for word, but you know what I mean. Like, bold. yeah, a direct outline where you go over and you just stick to what it is. The with that short of a time, you have no room for topic drifting. Well, I no never conversation. do that. <laughs> no, not you. Never. <laughs> Shiny object. Squirrel. I just think you're the the idea of having twenty minute segments. For each religion, like even twenty minutes is insanely short. Because because oh, okay. for most religions, you'd need an hour just to explain the politics. That no 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 no, no, no. The religion. I don't care if it's a hundred episodes; they're just gonna be short. 
No, that makes sense. Like, one episode be, like, the nine noble virtues of Osetru, and then one's this, that, like, the gods of Os, the Vanir, and then the Aesir, and stuff like that. I mean, I'd sense. be perfectly happy bringing up nine noble virtues of Osetru, and not even going into what they are, just a little bit about what they are. And then each one do as an episode. I mean, literally, I'm... My goal in this is I want to make an idiot-proof series. Oh, possible. I understand (laughs) that. And I know they will make a better idiot. I'm okay with that. When Scarif works, he he understands the mentality of idiots very well. Okay. (laughs) It's not even nice. No, it's accurate. (laughs) Doesn't have to be nice. (laughs) Why be nice to idiots? Barrett. (laughs) (laughs) So he has one of the nine noble virtues. We're not calling Scurve an idiot. We're calling his co-workers idiots. Uh-huh. And they are. Some of them are pretty cool. Um, I got the entirety of the spectrum there. But thinking about it, and this... Well, that would be it... really cool to do. Good idea, Scurve. I don't know. As I've looked around... And I hate to say it, but I mean, if I wanted to make the argument that I'm on the coolest podcast in the pagan community, I could make the argument. And I don't like that. Now, I know there's some, there's some that are, that are freaking rock, but hey, let's not go there. What's wrong with being on the coolest podcast? I have low self-esteem. And he likes to preserve his low self-esteem. If yes. self esteem gets too high, it might explode. Ow! And gut wrench is left room. <laughs> Bye, Robbie. But I mean, all that being said, I you, you see what my goals are. I want to do one for Wicca. I want to do one for Scam Karen, or one of her friends for the whole. The Greek pantheon. I'm, I just want to piece this together. I want something out there where people could actually say, well, someone so did a series on it. Let's, let's uh, listen to that. Well, thank you. you can call it the field guide to paganism. You might want to find someone who actually has a community to talk to. I don't know. I thought about that, but... You can always grab Dave Karen. Yeah, we can ambush Dave Karen sometimes. That could work. He doesn't mind it. You just gotta give him a heads up. Not, he, no, he might... He might be kind of confused, though, seeing that he has his own podcast. I, I, I thought about that, but there's two different scopes. Dave Karen's podcast is for Satra. <laughs> this one is my scope for and in its entirety. Please, the police don't ever. We're not recording, are we? Uh, I can stop recording. Okay, well, I'll just edit this part out. <laughs>